Welcome back to another Porsche car whisperer video. As you guys can see, we're with the Taycan yet again today. But today we're going to be discussing something called rear axle steering. How exactly does it work? What is its history at Porsche? And should you option it on your next Porsche car? So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so the history of rear axle steering at Porsche starts in the mid-1970s when Porsche was developing the 928. They found that as they're taking the car through higher speed corners, that the car had a lot of oversteer. And for all those Porsche lovers out there, we know that the car typically handles like it's on rails and even an amateur driver can handle the car very, very well. So Porsche decided to take an Opel Admiral and fit it with 928 suspension and put two steering wheels in the car. So they could have an engineer in the front controlling the front wheels and an engineer in the back controlling those back wheels. Porsche found that if they controlled those rear wheels within two tenths of a second of the front wheels, we could correct that oversteer and now create understeer. But now that we know this, how do we change the suspension to make it do that? Because cars don't have two steering wheels. Well, what they did is they took the conventional trailing arm of the rear suspension and they split it into two pieces and they put a pivot joint. This little pivot joint and splitting it into two pieces now had the car be able to have understeer as they're going through those corners instead of that oversteer. So now the car would tow in or out depending on the correct or depending on the direction that the car was heading. So if the car was heading to the right, those rear wheels would slightly tow in and head to the right. If we were going to the left, they would tow the opposite direction and go the same way as those front wheels. All this engineering that Porsche's engineers put into this rear suspension was now called the Visac axle. This is even used all the way up to our cars now today. Now, of course, it's been uh, dialed in a little bit more than it was back in, those, back in the 1970s, but we're still using it a lot of today. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop to those back rear wheels on this Taycan Turbo S and discuss exactly how this new rear axle steering system works. It is way more advanced than it was, of course, back in the 1970s. And then we're also going to discuss what are some of the cars that you could find that have this rear axle steering system on it. So I'll see you guys in the back. Okay, so all the magic for the rear axle steering, of course, is behind these rear wheels. But I can't really show you guys exactly how it works. So I have here on my phone something called the AR Visualizer app from Porsche. And we're going to briefly talk through exactly how does the system work and what does it even look like. So I have a Taycan Turbo S pulled up here on my app. I'm going to go ahead and place it right here. But I can't see it right now because all we can see is just the outside. So I, I want to be able to go in and see more of the systems inside the car. So I just go right here to charging. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. And you can see part of the charging system here on the car. I'm going to move the car back here a little bit just so we can see the rear of the car. So here she is. So here's, here's the meat and potatoes of this rear axle steering system. So you can see it. It's actually going to be right here be below these high voltage wires. And you can see there's the tow arm and attached to that is a forged aluminum fork with sensors on the end of it. And this is actually going to send information back through this system right here. And there's an index sensor that's now going to be able to tell the system which way should the wheels turn. Should they turn in the same direction or opposite direction? Well, that depends on the speed of the car, which we'll be talking as soon as we take the car for a quick drive. But back here to the AR visualizer, there's a little index sensor, which is going to be right there. And then we have a little drive belt inside of this little actuator housing that's going to move the system in or out for both sides of those wheels. And then you can see here's another fork and it goes right here to this other side tow arm. So this system is going to send information to the control unit for the rear axle steering system and either have this actuator move the, move the wheels in or move the wheels out depending on the speed. Now again, we have that index sensor drive belt which is going to be inside of this aluminum housing. And then we have that electrical, uh, electromechanical actuator right here that is like a little motor that's going to be moving that system. So that is how the system looks on the Taycan. So now let's go ahead and hop behind the wheel of this Taycan Turbo S, talk a little bit more about how the system feels, and then let's talk about a couple of the other Porsches that you would find that have rear axle steering. So I'll see you guys behind the wheel. Now that we're behind the wheel of this Taycan Turbo S, we're gonna first start off and do some slower speed maneuverability. And at slower speeds, 
the wheel's actually gonna turn in the opposite direction, and that's gonna effectively uh, shorten the wheelbase so we can make even greater uh, U-turns. Maybe if you're in a cul-de-sac and you're making spins, which I'm gonna do here in a moment. So I've actually attached two cameras to the back of this Tycon so you can see the wheels turn as we're going at slower as well as higher speeds. Now, what are some of the cars that Porsche offers that have rear axle steering? Well, the Taycan Turbo S has it as standard. All the other variants, it's gonna be an option. Now, of course, with the 911 Turbo S and any of our GT cars, those also have rear axle steering. Now, again, you can option it on 911s as well as some of our other variants. Now, the 918 has had rear axle steering, and the first car to have it for a long time was the 991.1 uh, GT3. Now that had a rear axle steering, a little bit different system than what we've got here in this Taycan Turbo S, but that again helped that car achieve crazy lap times. So as we're making these slower speed turns, again they're going to turn in the opposite direction. Now it's going to turn up to 2.8 degrees in the opposite direction, which is very significant and really helps with overall uh, slower speed maneuverability. Maybe you're in a tight space and you need to turn in and out, or again do a U turn at a very tight um, intersection, so that's gonna really help. But I'm here in this cul-de-sac, right here in front of the Porsche store, and we're just gonna do some circles, and you guys should be able to see the wheel turn, especially when I go like this. If I go like this, you're gonna really see it straighten out, because I've straight out the wheel, and then turn the wheel. And then I'm gonna turn it the other way here, and you should see that the, the wheels turn, again, opposite direction. So we're turning the wheels to the right, the front wheels to the right, we should see those, the rear wheels turn to the left. Now again, opposite, so left. We're going left, we're gonna go left, so that means that the rear wheels are turning to the right, shortening our wheelbase. So, and let me tell you, this car feels amazing when we're doing these little UEs. So I'm gonna go ahead and go straight. Now, on the Taycan, doing that, it's gonna shorten the wheelbase by about half of a meter, which is pretty significant. When you're talking about maybe tight spaces, that could mean that you're not gonna have to stop and do a three-point turn, and you might just be able to whip right around and do it. Just depends on the exact uh, turn that you're going to. So, now at higher speeds, between 30 and 50 miles an hour, the rear axle steering system is gonna be variable. So what does that mean? Well, it's going to be turning in either opposite or the same direction, just gonna depend on what the car feels exactly what it needs. So as I turn again, I'm going to the right, the wheels are gonna be turning to the left. So I'm gonna go a little bit quicker, we're above 30. As I turn, it's either gonna turn in the same direction or the opposite direction, just depends on what the car thinks it needs. Above 50 miles an hour, it's going to turn in the same direction and that's gonna help us really help ha help us turn in when we're maybe at a track and we can just really feel the car feels like it's on rails and you can feel those rear wheels turning to be honest with you. Now at higher speeds it's going to turn the wheels up to 1.2 degrees in the same direction. When I'm doing these slower speed turns you should see those the, the rear wheel turn and it's going to be pretty significant but at those higher speeds you may not see it quite as much and we're going a lot faster. So I'm going to do a U-turn here you're gonna see the wheel really turn, and as we straighten out, that wheel should be st those rear wheels should be straightening out. So, it's a pretty amazing system, and to be honest, I can really feel it. If you are maybe wanting to take your Porsche to the track, maybe this is something I would definitely recommend, is I can definitely feel it with overall driving dynamics and maneuverability, and overall, it's just gonna help you shave a little bit of uh, time at the track. So just depends on how you're gonna be using the car. So I can't recommend it for everyone. If uh, you're just using this car maybe more as a daily driver and you're not getting quite as aggressive, um, then I would say maybe, maybe stick away from it. Maybe this isn't something that you necessarily need to add to your car. But if you're driving it a lot more aggressively, you can definitely feel a difference with this system. So. Hope this was helpful for you guys. If you guys have any questions about the rear axle steering system, please leave them down in the comments below uh, so we can, of course, share our knowledge together. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.